Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Sisterhood Mornings, first one of 2013. Are you glad to be here? I am so excited to be here with you. Before we go any further, would you just do me a favor and help me welcome those who are joining us online throughout our campuses or just watching online. We're so glad you're joining us today or tonight or whatever it is where you are. Um, We just trust that you're going to be blessed just like we are through this message, and we thank you for making time in your life to join us here at Celebration Sisterhood. So did everybody get a hold of a little workbook or you know how to get it at least if you want it? Yeah, you should have one, um, at least one at your table. And um, also, I'd love to do something really quick. If, if our, my table leaders would just stand up, I, I normally do this at the end, but I just want to take a minute and have our table leaders stand up. Keep standing so everyone can see you. Take a good look. Okay, you can be there like, let us sit down. <laughs> you can have a seat now. Um, I just want you to see where our table leaders are because at the end of every message, we have what's called table time. And this is really where we get the message off of the pages of the workbook and get it into our everyday lives. Because how many of you know the Word of God is not just to hear, but it's to do. And it's in doing the Word that we find the real transformative power of the Word of God. And Sisterhood really aims to be a place where you can do that in a safe, loving, accepting environment where you can be honest, where you can be transparent, where you can receive encouragement. And so table time is really where we make that happen. And so if there's not a table leader at your table, um, first, in, what you can go join a table or you can just step up and be a table leader right there. there it's easy. There's table talk questions in the back of the, at the end of this message. And um, let us know if you didn't have a table leader. We'd love to help you. Liz can help you or I can or anybody else who stood up and was a table leader. So great. Are you ready to get started? Let's pray before we get started. Father God, we thank you so much for your word and we just honor it, Lord. We honor the place of your word in our lives. Holy Spirit, we invite you to speak into our lives today. We open our hearts to your voice and to your calling. And Jesus, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made so that we can be filled with the Holy Spirit, so that we can live for you, so that we can be forgiven, and so that we can live according to your rhythm, the pace set by your yoke, which is easy and light and not burdensome. We give you these next few minutes with all of our hearts, God. Help us to really take everything that you want for us. In Jesus' name, amen. Awesome. Well, I'm so excited about this series called Rhythms of Grace, Pacing Yourself for the Long Haul. Pacing Yourself for the Long Haul. We often hear that life isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. So you have to pace yourself not for the quick finish, but for the long finish. But how many of you know that it's easier said than done to pace yourself? Because life has this way of taking on a momentum of its own. I know my life is like this. I do my very best. If you know me at all, you know I am obsessed with calendar planning. I've got, I think, probably about four calendars in my house. I've got one that hangs on the wall. I've got one that's in a binder. I've got one. My kids have one. I've got Google ones. I've got Outlook ones. I'm trying to sync them all up. Stovall's got a calendar. I mean, we merge probably seven calendars every single day just to make life happen. And I can say from my perspective that, that those calendars, if I'm not careful to guard them and paste them, it will start to drive me. My calendar becomes the motivating force of my life instead of actually the Holy Spirit leading me to set the pace for my life. And I'd like to just kind of open up my life to you and tell you why I chose to do this series this semester. I actually had something really different on my heart when we ended last semester, but um, I had this weird thing happen. We had a really difficult year or a stressful year in lots of ways. Good. You know, sometimes blessings can bring enlargement and enlargement can bring stress, right? And so I had a great, lots of blessings happen between 2011 and 2012, not the least of which was moving into a new building. And um, just, you know, that, that along with my kids' schedule, and then we moved into a new house, and that had its issues. If you were here for the Proverbs series, you know that we had a rodent infestation and mold infestations and had to deal with that. That took about a year. And by the time we just finished construction on our house, we were about a month and a half out to moving in the new building. So all that was overlapping. It was a big, everything was a blessing, But then in some ways, you had like church was growing, so we're traveling all over the place, and kids are doing great, but, you know, their their schedules, their sports, it was just getting to be so much that by the time Sisterhood actually ended, at the end of 2012, I was so just shot. You ever had that feeling like you you hit the end of your, like a long gauntlet of activity, and then you just want (gasps) to... 
You sit there and do nothing. Well, that's what happened to me. And, you know, at the end of the year, every year, just shortly before New Year's, I spend some time in reflection, and I kind of look back over the year that's about to pass, and I look toward the next year, and I like to do some evaluating. You know, what things really worked for me? What things am I going to keep in my life? What things am I going to take out of my life? How am I going to make adjustments for the coming year? No, it's very important as people, not just as women, but every person, needs to take some time out to strategically think about the pace and the direction of your life. And if you fail to do this, then basically what's going to happen is the pressure and the circumstances and the schedule of your life begin to shape your life rather than you intentionally shaping your life. And so I've made it a habit various times throughout the year, but particularly at the end of the year before awakening, sit down, look at things, ask the Lord, you know, what do I need to cut off? What do I need to put in? What's doing good? What pleases you? What doesn't? What can be the focus of my awakening fast? Um, how can I pray? What do I need to believe for? But this year I sat down to engage in that process and I just couldn't do it. I just had nothing left in me. I didn't have the will or the emotion or the strength in any area of my life to sit down and even just think about the next year. And Christmas came and went. I had a great time with my family, but I noticed this emptiness on the inside of me. It wasn't depression. I've had that before. You can find out a lot more about this at the beginning of your workbook. But it was just a nothingness. It was this numbness. I couldn't feel happy. I couldn't feel sad. I desperately wanted to, you know, that the time came, Christmas was over. It was time for me to get back into a routine. And I would, you know, you know, say, okay, I'm going to stay home and write today. I'm going to write the sisterhood curriculum. And I would piddle around my house and sit down at my computer for hours and not a word would come up on the screen. You know, if you've ever written anything, you know how intimidating it feels to sit down to a blank document on your computer and know that you've got to fill up 30, 40, 50 pages worth of content. And I kept, and the, and the stress of that deadline, oh, it's got to be ready for print at this moment. And everyone's depending on me. It started to come on and I hadn't fully recovered. And I remember laying in bed at night, you know, after a couple of weeks of that. And I thought, God, you know, I need to, I need to make some time. I, I know this isn't healthy and I need to make some time to replenish. I can't continue to lead at this level. I can't continue to go where I need to go and do what I need to do and minister the way I need to minister out of this kind of deficit in my soul. But I don't have time to fill up again. I really don't know what to do. And I, I started thinking through my year and looking at, like, you've got awakening, which is amazing, but it's very ministry intensive. And then I've got this, and then I've got this. And then when February comes, sisterhood starts. And then my spring schedule kicks in and it overcomes me like a flood until May after, you know, after shine is over. And in the middle of that, I got a book deadline and I've got, you know, publishing agents and teaching things and snowball schedule. And I kept, I was like, oh, there's no way. Like, okay, maybe after shine, I can um, rest. And I'm starting to feel the weight and the despair of like, I can't stop until after shine. You ever felt like that? Like you're already empty and you're like, I can't stop until four months from now. <laughs> five months from now. And then I realized, I remember laying in bed and going, I'm not going to make it. Like, I'm going to have a nervous breakdown before shine. I won't make it to shine. <laughs> I'm laughing now, but at the time I wasn't laughing. I literally knew I can't go on like this. I, I can't. And maybe I even thought maybe it's time for me to quit. Maybe I shouldn't be in ministry. Maybe I should just, you know, step back and just be mom. And this is a, you know, crucial season for my kids. And maybe I'm doing too much. And and I just kind of laid in bed, and I actually cried. I'm like, God, you know, if my time, my season of leading is over, I'm, that's, I'm okay with that. Show me what to do. I'll give it up. I really was there. And um, didn't receive an answer that night. The Lord didn't wake me in a dream or give me a solution. Just went to bed kind of depressed and woke up kind of depressed. <laughs> and then um, the next Sunday was the very first Sunday of my, my service at, at church. And um, Stovall did a message called Project or Process. How many of you remember that, Project or Process? And um, the Lord spoke to me while Stovall was talking about that. And he really began to convict me about the pace of my life. 